Hey everybody, my name is Caitlin Binder and we are here today to do the second experiment of Chem 8M in the Organic Chemistry Teaching Labs. Yeah, what are we doing today, Grant? Today we're going to separate the three principal components of Excedrin uh, into their individual components through just typical liquid-liquid extractions. We're going to be playing with the solubilities of each molecule by doing some really simple acid-base chemistry to drive them into different layers and to isolate them. Yeah. So this lab has a lot of uh, tricky steps that can be a little bit confusing and the point of this video is to help you clarify or help us clarify those steps and to give you a little bit more ease and uh, calmness as you go through the lab and work through it. Yeah, we're going to be super safe. But most importantly, we're going to have, have fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. You guys ready to do it? Let's do Let's it. Let's do, do it. it. Yeah. All right. So Excedrin is composed of acetaminophen, aspirin, and caffeine. And now that's all three of these are mixed into this one solution. We're going to go ahead and start uh, separating them. So this is 10 mils of potassium phosphate. We'll be using this to deprotonate the carboxylic acid. And when we add this potassium phosphate, we'll be creating two layers inside, one aqueous and one organic. We'll be driving aspirin into the aqueous layer by deprotonating the carboxylic acid. Make sure that all of the aspirin is deprotonated. What we're doing now is taking the aspirin uh, that we had in the original mixture of Excedrin and by adding the potassium phosphate, like Grant said, we're creating a salt. After you add the potassium phosphate, you're going to get two layers in your separatory funnel. On the top, you're going to have ethyl acetate, which contains caffeine and acetaminophen. On the bottom, you're going to have the aqueous layer, which contains the deprotonated aspirin. We've added a second smaller portion of potassium phosphate. Typically when you do extractions, you'll do multiple washings and extractions to improve your yield. So know that we've separated our aspirin salt in our aqueous vial. What's left or what remains in the organic layer is still our acetaminophen and our caffeine. The next step in our isolation of the Excedrin components is to isolate acetaminophen. We're gonna use the same exact strategy that we use to isolate aspirin but in this case, we're going to be deprotonating a phenol instead of a carboxylic acid. So we're going to step our game up and use a stronger base, potassium hydroxide. I'm now going to come in and add a second, smaller portion of potassium hydroxide. This time, we're going to carefully try to get every last drop. At this stage, we've successfully separated the three components of Excedrin. Aspirin and acetaminophen are in their own scintillation vials waiting to be isolated, and caffeine is the last remaining component in the separatory funnel. We're going to start with the isolation of caffeine. It is currently dissolved in ethyl acetate, so we're going to start by adding 10 mils of brine. Now the brine shouldn't have any uh, caffeine contained within it, but we'll still save it, which is pretty typical when you're doing extractions. So we're gonna drain the brine into this clearly labeled Erlenmeyer and save it for later, just in case. And then we're going to drain this ethyl acetate into this clearly marked Erlenmeyer to capture the organic layer in one spot. And now there still might be some caffeine trapped in the walls of the sin vial. So we're just going to rinse it down one more time with some additional ethyl acetate, about five to 10 mils. I think the procedure says less than that. 
And here I'm shaking a little more forcefully because I want to get as much off the walls of this uh, set funnel that I can. And we're going to drain that into this same Erlenmeyer with the same fraction of ethyl acetate from before. By tilting it on its side, you can check to see if there's water in there. We can get the residual water by drying it with sodium sulfate. I'm just going to take a nice scupula and give it a swirl. And if you can see the sodium sulfate kind of freely moving around in solution, kind of like a snow globe, that means that you've put enough. of aspirin step. And what we're going to try to do here is take our aqueous layer that we separated and we're going to try to bring it down to a pH of 1. Right there. Separation funnel, we added potassium phosphate and weak base to deprotonate our aspirin into the aspirin salt. And right now we just added hydrochloric, sap, hydrochloric acid to reprotonate the aspirin and get it to precipitate out of solution. And that's what we're seeing here in this cloudy mixture. <laughs> salt before, but once we added our hydrochloric acid, we've reprotonated, and now we got back to our protonated acetaminophen. After allowing the two layers to separate, we're going to then just drain out the aqueous layer. And now I'm gonna drain our organic layer that is uh, allegedly carrying the acetaminophen into our reception flask labeled for organic. And once these two are separated, we're gonna go ahead and try to recover as much of the acetaminophen that may still be in the aqueous layer by reintroducing it back into the set funnel. Thank you. 
And so just to reiterate, um, this is again very different uh, liquid liquid extraction on a different aqueous layer that's not to be confused with the caffeine extraction in the with the brine that's sitting in the back. Once the two layers have separated with the aqueous layer on the bottom and the organic layer on top, we're going to flush out the aqueous into our acetaminophen aqueous flask. So there seems to be a little blob in there. We're going to go ahead and try to remove that with the pipette. While we're waiting for our organic layer to dry or just any other downtime, it's always a great idea to start cleaning up. So here we have just a little close up of our solid waste box and our liquid waste box. So our solid waste is where we're gonna put those pH strips that we had, any glass pipettes. Uh, and in here, our liquid waste, we haven't put anything in there yet, but we will soon. You can rinse your containers after getting, after uh, dumping the liquid into the waste, you're gonna rinse them with just a little bit of ethanol. Uh, after those ethanol rinses, we're going to then wash everything in the sink. So we're going to go ahead and just weigh it out like this as it is, as a liquid. How'd you like it? It was good. Not it too wasn't bad. as scary as I thought it was going to be as, go, as, a, as I was going in. Yeah. All right. All right. Had a good partner, so it made it easy. That's huge. You guys did a really good job of splitting up those tasks. I really like that. little teamwork. Had a good solid game plan. That was great. Yeah, so what we did, just to kind of summarize, we started with Excedrin. It has caffeine, aspirin, and acetaminophen. So we first added a weak base, and that picked off aspirin with that carboxylic acid. We then added KOH, strong base, and that then deprotonated acetaminophen, right? So now we had the two separate ones there. The caffeine was all by itself in its organic layer. All we had to do was get rid of that, so wash it off with that brine, and then get rid of the solvent. Uh, with the aspirin, that was the one that precipitated, right guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we got some nice precipitate there. Easy filtration. Um, that one we were gonna, we would have waited a week, right? That you can do it the second week of lab. Um, and then the one part that does give students the most confusion that we're very happy we got some good shots of was the acidic aqueous extraction uh, with acetaminophen. So we actually had to go through, put it back into ethyl acetate, um, rotavap that down after washing it with brine, and then we had that nice last shot with our three individual components. What were they again? Caffeine, acetaminophen, 
and aspirin. Yeah. Yeah. Caffeine, acetaminophen, and aspirin. Mm -hmm. So how about some some issues that we have? Let's let's just close with. <laughs> Well, once we had them all separated and we were isolating all three components, there was just so many Erlenmeyer flasks yeah. and scintillation vials and round bottom flasks. I, I got pretty confused, but luckily we had really good labels the whole time. Yeah. Um, that kind of saved us. Definitely would have mixed things up. Yeah, I think also being really meticulous, uh, you were really good with your hands, not shaking the flask too vigorously, making sure the stop clock was closed and having your finger on the cap, that way it doesn't shoot off. Mm -hmm. I think you did a really good job, Grant. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, just carefully, you know, assessing the pH, making sure not to dip the strip in, um, make sure, making sure we had good readings there. Um, and then, yeah, uh, keeping the products at the end. Uh, you know, I almost threw them out because we had so much stuff, but uh, luckily David managed to stop me before I put it in the waste. And uh, yeah, we got all three out. So we're ready for analysis next week, right? Yeah, okay. yeah so next week would be uh, TLC to assess the purity and then IR spectroscopy if, they're, if they are pure. Otherwise, you're gonna be taking IR of standards. Um, but yeah, I, I, hope, I hope you all had fun watching. I know these guys had a good time Best. getting it going. We had a good time putting this together. Uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to us by email, come to our office hours, and we're super happy to help. All right. See you next time. Bye.